like I told you earlier, we're going to start combining back those coordinate grids. So we get to combine areas of math. That's awesome. So let's take a look at the problem you were supposed to start with today. So it says, given the rule t equals s plus 3, and the sharing no starting number of 0, give an input-output table to show the first six terms in the sequence. All right, well, that sounds overly complicated. So let's just take a quick peek at what that means. Make sure that we have that first. So they're saying the rule is do t, that's this one, is equal to s plus 3. All right, well, let's look at that. So if s is 0, and I put 0 in here, 0 plus 3 is 3. So that means t equals 3. All right, that's not overly complicated. Now 1. So it's saying s equals 1. So if s equals 1, 1 plus 3 is 4. All right, well, t equals 4. All right, 2. If s is 2, 2 plus 3 is 5. t equals 5 then. Okay, and that's all we're doing with it. Now, these extra ones, it says find the first six terms. All right, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's my first six terms. Now, looking at this, I should notice the pattern, but if you don't, that's okay. So if I put in my s, 3 plus 3 is 6. Put in my s, 4 plus 3 is 7. And put in the 5, 5 plus 3 is 8. So realistically, when they had this here and they said t equals s plus 3, they're just saying this equals s. All right, they're saying the rule is plus 3. That's all it is. So if it was s times 2 and I was putting that in, then the rule is times 2. So it's, it sounds more complicated than it needs to be. The more you use it, it'll get pretty easy. Now, here's our trickier part, because the in and out functions are pretty easy, especially the ones like that. The hard part is this one, too. Graph the resulting ordered pairs on the coordinate plane. All right, so first off, what are the ordered pairs? Well, pairs are a set of numbers that come together in, what a surprise, order. So looking at this, it might be a benefit for you when you do this to write out the ordered pairs. So ordered pairs are the ones that came together. I used this one to get this one. So those are my ordered pairs. So looking at it, my first ordered pair that I have is 0, 3. That's my first ordered pair. Then I have 1, 4. Then I've got 2, comma 5, forgot my parentheses. Then I've got number 4. I've got is what? 3, comma 6. Number 5 is 4, comma 7. And number 6 is 5, comma 8. Now earlier, or last week, I told you guys about this. The why do we put ordered pairs in parentheses? And I told you, Eventually, you're going to get to the point that you're going to have a lot of ordered pairs sitting around, and you want to keep them separated so you can clearly see these are the ones that go together. Now, graphing it. Let's take a look. So let me exit out for this for a second, switch over to a graph. Not that. There's a graph. All right, so as we take a look at our graph real quick, imagine that you still have your paper with you so you can see the ordered pairs. I can see it on the side. I know you can't. So all we would do is we would go through and we would take a look and see if we could go through and mark those off. So my first one was 0, 3, right? So I go over 0 and I go up 3. There's that spot, okay? It's exactly the way we did coordinate grids. The second order pair was 1, 4. Then it was 2, 5. Then it was 3, 6. Then it was 4, 7. And then it was 5, 8. Now, you should, on every addition problem that you have, so if you have an addition rule, you should always end up with this straight line just like this. Okay, it'll happen every single time. And imagine the whole purpose of doing this is so we can make projections. We can imagine what the answers would be farther along. So every adding and subtracting along 
goes over one, up one, over one, up one, over one, up one, just like this. It always goes at the same angle for adding and subtracting. So even without my ruler, I know it's going over one, up one. So I'm just cutting across diagonally, okay? And I get that nice slant just like that. So I should be able to make predictions based off of what we've already seen. So I could predict, all right, farther down the line, what's going to happen, okay? That's our goal for this. And that's all we need to do. Now, for you today, you didn't need to draw this extra part. You just needed to draw this. That's what they asked you to graph. And you should connect them together so you can see how that they are connected. Now, when we go back to what we started with, it did have more there, though. So when we looked at it, it did say, well, what would be the 10th turn of the sequence be? Now, I always have some people who they'll go through and they'll get, okay, one, two, three, four, and they'll go through and they'll slowly figure it out. And that's great, okay? But ideally, we should be able to just plug something in and solve it that way. So if you wanted to, if you knew the rule was plus, was, sorry, I'm on a race, plus plus three, you should be able to plug in numbers and just go all the way until you find the 10th term. Or you can just skip down to the one that we need, okay? So looking at it and thinking about it, some people will put in number 10. And they'll say, oh, the 10th one is 10 plus three is 13. Ah, but that's not true. Now I want you to stop and think for a second. Why is that not true? Why is the 10th term not going to be 10? So hit pause for a second and think about that. Okay, hopefully you paused it, you thought about it, or you're pausing it now while I'm talking and thinking about it. So the reason why the 10th term is not gonna be 10 is because we didn't start at the number one. We started at zero. So the first term was zero. The second term was one. The third one we did was two. The fourth one we did was three. So the 10th term, when we get to it, the 10th term is not gonna be 10. The 10th term is actually going to be nine. So nine, and then the rule is plus three. Now, could I have just looked at my graph? Could I have looked at the graph, went over to nine, followed it up and hit 12? Yeah, if you did a great job graphing it perfectly, me personally, I trust this more than I trust my graphing skills because I'm not the best at drawing straight lines, even with rulers at times. So me personally, if I'm answering those kind of questions, I come back to here. Now it does say create another import, import out, input output table with your own addition rule and then write that in there. So hopefully you did do that. So I'm gonna pause for a second to get mine drawn in so we can take a look at that. Oh, maybe I'm not. All right, good. I didn't want to pause it anyway. Who likes to pause things? You guys like to hear me ramble. So, all right. So if we were taking a look, my original drawing was this right here. Okay. Whoops. You know what? It actually wasn't because we started at zero three. So that was my original one right there. Okay. All right. Now, if I had come up with another rule to do this, I don't know what my rule would have been. Maybe I would have done plus five. So I could come up with a few terms for this. Okay. So an X number and a Y number. So I get an ordered pair. So if I do zero, one, two, and three, and my rule is plus five, I get zero plus five is five. One plus five is six. Two plus five is seven. And three plus five is eight. So I could write that out. So I have zero, five. 1, 6, 2, 7, 3, 8, and I get a rule that looks something like this, okay? So notice, I actually ended up with pretty much parallel lines there because that's what happens, like I talked about, with the adding and subtracting rules, they're always going to move at the same angle, the same slope, okay? It would be interesting if you have to graph some multiplication ones to see if it works the same or whether it has a change to it. And then we'll talk about that later. But I know our addition and subtraction will always have a same basic slope. All right. So today, try your best on these. Uh, do everything that you can. Take a look if they don't make sense or go ahead and come in, go to office hours. But when you come to office hours, you're going to need to have graph paper ready. 
all right? Because that's what we're doing today. We're taking tables and turning it into graphs. So please come prepared. All right, good luck today and we hope to see you.